now. Hey everyone, we're going live, or we're live now, and it's going to be a couple minutes before we actually get started. I'm going to let people join the group, so if you're watching this after it's being recorded, I'm sorry for the delay, but we're going to let people join as our book pillow top starts, or finishes being stitched out. Right now, we are tagging everybody to make sure you guys see that we're going live and we're getting some newcomers into the group so we're getting those added as quick as possible so hi I was just explaining that we're letting everyone get in here it'll take a couple minutes so I just wanted to get the live video started so if you guys want to start putting comments below um, let people know that are joining I can't see comments on my phone Just getting everything ready, letting people join. I'm finishing up our book cover, if you guys want to see that. Getting stitched out. It's got one more minute. Sorry for the loud noise. It'll be over soon. I'm going to put the phone down so you guys don't get dizzy. And we'll get started in about one minute. We're getting started soon, getting everyone tagged and making sure everyone has time to get in the group. In case anyone missed it, the tutorial that I'm doing is the pillow tutorial, but the artwork was actually done by my six-year-old. So you'll see that pretty soon. I'm pretty proud of her. She also picked out the fabrics. Okay, we gotta stitch out one more letter. So I'm not stitching out the entire book pillow on the video because that's irrelevant. You guys are gonna stitch out whatever pillow pocket that you want. So we're basically gonna pick up from there. Kaylin is getting everyone tagged in the group, making sure everyone has a chance to join. Comment below and let me know where you guys are from. I can't see any comments. Oh, here we go. I got comments now. Okay, I think, Lori, I am doing an envelope style pillow. I'll show you the one I did the other day. This is, let me turn it. This is the one I did the other day. So you're going to have a pocket on the front, and then on the back, you're going to have your opening for your pillow to go in. And then, I think she has a book in here. Yep. So your book on the front. So that is what we're going to make today. Do you have a lot more to go? Yes. You can stop. I need you to hold the phone. Okay, so we're going to start with our pocket, which will be the first thing that you finish. I'm going to take mine off the hoop. It's all finished stitching. 
So Kinsley drew the little ghost that we have here, and she hasn't seen it stitched out yet, so. I'm excited for her to see it. And it says, here for the books. Lori, I love, once you start using zippers, it's a little less intimidating. Let's pull that right up. That's oh, my toe. Sorry. It's a little less intimidating, um, but yeah, it is very scary to get started. I still don't use them regularly. I like the pockets. That's just how I started making pillows years ago, and that's how I've always done it. So I'm going to hand the phone to Kaylin so she can start watching or start recording. So right now I have my pocket. This is going to be the front piece. It's our pocket straight off the hoop. I also, I'm using a 16 by 16 pillow. So all my measurements are based off of 16 by 16 and I'm not following a pattern. I've just, I made these years ago and so I always make my pillow cover the size of the pillow because you don't need to leave a seam allowance because the pillow is going to squish and move around and I want my cover to be tight to the pillow. So we have our pocket. I'm going to cut that down in a minute and then I've pre-cut all my pieces. I need one piece for the front, and this is going to go behind the pocket. This is going to be the size of your pillow. So this piece I already cut 16 by 16. And then my pocket is going to go right over that piece. And then on the back for the envelope, I used 16 inches wide because that's the width of my pillow. But I did not go the full 16 inches because we're going to make an envelope style. So it's basically two more pockets layered on top of each other. So we're going to have a pocket. This is going to be on your back. You're going to have a pocket here and then another pocket that layers over it. And the total of the two, even when they're overlapped, is going to be 16 by 16. So for these, again, I have a 16 by 16 inch piece for the front. I have my pocket that's going to be 16 inches wide. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to cut that in a minute. And then we have these two pieces. This one is 16 by 11. And the next one is 16 by 9. And I'm going to show you what happens if you don't make your back pieces long enough. I made this pillow a couple of years ago. This is what's going to happen. So if you want your pillow to look like it's about to eat somebody, then this is what happens when your pockets are too little. So you don't want your pieces. So I overestimate. I took quite a bit more inches because we're going to fold this as well. So first let's cut down our pocket. And this is what I just finished stitching out. And I know he needs to be 16 inches wide. Again, because that's the width of my pillow. So, all my numbers are upside down. So one edge is going to be here, one is going to be here. I'm going to center him on the 8. And then I'm going to cut 16 inches. So now, the distance that you're cutting, the size of this, is all up to you how big or how deep you want your pocket on your pillow to be. This one, I made it really tall. I think I'm going to make it shorter than that. So I want my finished pocket to maybe be halfway up the pillow. So let's look at our design. And this was done in an 8x12 frame. So the design itself is roughly 8 inches. I'm going to make this 10 inches by 16 and that will give me a seam allowance on the bottom and it will give me some room on the top to fold it over to make a nice clean edge. Actually I think we're going to do 11. If we do too many we can always cut it down but I can't super glue my fabric back together. So we're going to make this piece 11 by 16. So 
So now all of our pieces are cut. So what we want to do now is finish off all the edges that are going to be showing. To finish these off, what I'm going to do is come down here. Cut this out. So we want this to be a nice finished edge. So I'm going to roll it down at a half an inch. So I'm going to meet it at my square. And then I'm going to roll it one more time. And then I'm going to pin this edge. And then I'm going to come over to the other side. I'm going to roll it and roll it again. You can also use bias tape if you prefer to use that. I didn't really have a good selection of colors that go with this, but if I were to use that, I would add it now. And it's just this tape that's pre-folded. Some people make their own, and it would just go along the edges, and so it would give it a nice white binding. But we're, we're not doing that on this one. So now I'm just gonna continue down the way and roll these all so they all line up. Whoops, that didn't go all the way through. If you have any questions so far, feel free to ask. Do you ever line your pocket to hide the backing? I ha These are the first ones I've done, so I have not line them that's a good idea if you would want to you would just put a piece the same size and lay it over the back and have your good side facing out and then fold this right over the top so it would kind of enclose the edge here but I have not done that so now I have my pocket this is what it's gonna look like I don't need to do anything to these edges because they're going to be sewn into the seam allowance here. So we're going to leave that one. But I do want, this is my finished piece. Where are my pockets? So these are the pieces for the back. You're going to want to follow the same technique to give these a finished edge. Just on one, one of the length, you want the length of them, or the width, I guess, would be the same. So you're 16 inches wide, you're making one side of it folded over and finished. And luckily, Kinsley picked out fabrics that don't have a direction, but if you do have a direction on them, you're going to want to make sure that your pieces are folded the correct way. Because this one's going to lay like this with my finished edge. This fabric is so thick and the glitter is like textured. My needles don't want to go through it. So this one's going to lay like this and the next one is going to lay over it. So I want the bottom, if these had a direction, I want the bottom of this one overlapping here. And once, when you stitch these to hold them down, it's a fun time to use a decorative stitch. If you look on the pillow I made a couple years ago, even though the pockets don't line up for the envelope, I tried a zigzag stitch across it. And that was, I made that in a rush. I was excited I got this name fabric with our last name on it. Look, I even put the W... It's a W for our last name, but I put the fabric upside down. Oops. So when the fabric is the right way to read Wilfong, the W makes an M. 
Okay, so now I have all three pieces ready to go. I'm going to get these stitched first. So we're gonna move over to the sewing machine now with our three pieces. On these three, I'm gonna lay it so the right side is facing down and I'm gonna start it right here at this edge. Oops. Don't start it too soon, it'll eat it right down there. your fold over a little wider you can add a double stitch so it'll lay nice and flat I'm just doing a straight stitch on these so we have our pocket is all ready to go we have a nice finished spot this is gonna run out of bottom thread too. Isn't that fun? So now I'm going to stitch the next one again, right side facing down. Oopsie, watch out for that needle. Here she no, she's on the One more, so that's one of the back envelopes, and our final one. not the best sewer that's why I am not a seamstress I do not sell these Should definitely take my time To go back to those. Isn't that great? Those. Okay, now we're going to layer up our pillow for the final step. So, first we're going to start with our front piece, the piece you're going to see on your pillow. And that would be this blue one right here. You're going to lay that one down first. And then lay your pocket on top of it. You can pin these if you want. Oops. And this is just to hold it in place while we layer the rest of it because then we'll put some more pins all the way around. So I'm just getting this in place. Okay. So now it's going to work as though it's a regular sewing a square together front to back. So you put your right sides together. 
So now for our pockets. These are going to face the pillow and I'm gonna put my shorter one on top. So I'm gonna lay that one there. And these are gonna to go to the corner at the top, the two top corners. And then my other piece is going to line up with my two corners on the bottom. And then they're going to overlap in the middle. The hair on somewhere. So now I'm going to pin these. And when you sew this, sometimes when you sew things that you have to turn, you leave an opening for turning. Well, with these pockets on the back, you don't have to leave a spot for turning. We're going to turn it right in there. So we can pin this all the way around. I guess I could just move the pillow instead of myself. And I, again, I am not a regular sewer, so I am not pin crazy typically. So if you're sewing this, you might want to add more pins. But I would suggest making sure to leave, put an extra one up here to secure the, t the two flaps in place. This corner is not straight. And these are uneven over here, so I'm going to make my seam allowance in a little further. Not much, because we need to stay at our 16 inches to fit our pillow. But the good thing about the pillow is it'll squish. And this pillow is kind of thin, so we've got some leeway. So it just all depends on what some pit like this one was fuller, so we needed every inch. Okay, so now we're going to take this over to the machine. We're all sewn together. We're going to take it over to the machine and we're going to sew this all the way around and pray we don't run out of bobbin thread. I'm going to start over here and make sure not to run over your needles. Stop it with my finger. Does anyone have any questions so far? Now when I go back this way, you're going to be careful to make sure the flap stays down. And I have no idea how to slow this machine down. stop real close to it to make sure what the pin I was trying to get 
it up there before I pull off the pen, so it would stay. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> I didn't see that pin. <clears throat> this light is so hot over here. Um, how many inches do you want to pull off the pen? I would say a minimum of an inch and a half to two inches. The more the better. The fluffier your pillow, the more I would overlap it because that's where it's going to stuff. I would say two inches to be safe. I'll measure this one when we're done to see how much of an overlap there was. So now we're sewn all the way around and our only opening is right here. So we're going to reach in and grab a corner and then pop the rest of the corners out. I'm surprised Kinsley's not down here. Push out your corners. So now we have our front and we have our back. And we're going to put our pillow in here. Nope, I didn't cover that seam. Oh, come on. So now see this. Oops, this one goes on me. And now they don't overlap as much because once they puff out, they're going to spread. So this probably isn't overlapped enough. So I'm going to show you. Where do you get your pillows? I got them back, I don't even know when I got those. I got them at Joann's. I usually get them if they're on sale. I'm going to sew this. I don't, I missed the bottom. Hold on. Um, Joann's usually has good sales on their pillows, and then I always try to use a coupon also. Can you just leave your corners away instead of clipping them? I do. That's a... Whoops, why isn't it threading? Um, if I was selling this, I would clip my corners so they turn nicely. You can do that. It just helps them lay nicer. Thank you for suggesting that. I honestly, if my serger wasn't in timeout, I probably would have surged all of this. That final step, I would have surged all the way around. It just secures it. Do you know if you sew well at craft fairs? I do not. I, again, I'm not, I don't do craft fairs anymore. I don't have time with the kids' sports. So, I do not know personally. They, I haven't had feedback yet from customers because I just started making these designs as well. So if anyone else can chime in and has done these at a craft fair, let me know. 
So this overlaps almost exactly an inch and a half. So I would say overlap your flaps two inches just to be safe. I mean, you could go as far as you want. The more overlapped, the better they're going to cover. So again, this is a very simple pillow form. This one, I used upholstery fabrics I had from another project. So there's not as much give. That project. <laughs> Matching our family room. I made a bunch of pillows, or started to make a bunch for our family room when I repainted it. And if you're selling these, I would then press these down. That's what I didn't do. I should have ironed those before I sewed. Another tip is when you're making your original side. Let me bring this over. Yeah, my iron's not hot. When you're rolling your pieces for the edges, ironing it is the best way to ensure this fabric looks so much the same. If you roll it once and iron it right here, then it just makes it makes your whole seam lay flatter. So then when I go to do the next step, it just makes it easier for pinning and it makes it easier for sewing for that to be laying flat because now it's not trying to unroll. So that's one thing I should have done up there and did not. Can you get the dimensions again? I will post a link to the dimensions. The whole, my pillow was 16 by 16. So I used that to base the rest of my fabrics off of. Then I did, so I had my pocket was 16 by 11. To, I, so that I had some space above the and below the design and room for folding and room for a seam allowance at bottom. And then on the back, I had 16 by 9 and 16 by 12. And again, left room for turning and left room for a seam allowance. But I would honestly, I would add an extra inch. So I would probably do 16 by 10 and 16 by 12. Just to give yourself some space there. Then we're going to put our pillow back in here. Now it's not ripped. And there you go. You have your pillow. And again, it's fine with the dimensions I used at the beginning. It still overlaps about an inch. And then... Right there. She's trying to get the come. And then it's ready for your books. And ready to be loved. Are you going to post this video afterwards? Yes, I will post this video online. I will post this video online when this is all finished and um, I will post dimensions. I will also put this on the YouTube channel. So I will post everything that I did, everything I used, and I might even write up a tips sheet to go with the video. Um, so if you want to read those as well, I might make a second one with a PDF tutorial some people want to go back and refer to. So if you have any additional questions and you're watching this after it's live, feel free to leave your questions below. I do come back periodically and read through to make sure anyone that watched it after it was live um, that I answer any of their questions. So thank you for joining us today. Sorry, we're a big mess. We had soccer game and it's 80 to 85 86 degrees today and end of September it should not be that hot so anyway thank you again for joining us on Sunday and hope you guys all
learned something today. So show me your projects if you guys start making them. I'm going to start working on a Christmas one now. So have a great day. Bye.